it's pretty good. At least pretty good odds on your end, isn't it? Anything can happen on any given Sunday. Both ways. Both ways can. Anything can happen though. Just because they rookies and they got that title don't mean nothing. We already halfway through the season. We only got a few games left, so you got to have some type of experience in. Fourteen points a game. Fourteen. That's, that's, that's not many. You got to start from somewhere. I got to start from somewhere. I understand what their record is and how they've been and what they're trying to figure out with their pieces up front and their quarterback, but they're coming along, though. As long as you, like I said, as long as you got a guy like Larry Fitzgerald on that offense, that offense is always going to gonna move. You look at it as a, I mean, these final four weeks, really, though, it's just as an opportunity to get healthy, you know, have some positive momentum going into next year. Is that, how, how do you guys approach, you know, these, these last four games? Trying to win these last four games out. Like you said, go out on the end of the year on a good note, not a bad one, and just get, just get better as a player. Your technique, everything, your skill set, um, your defensive playbook, so you can be comfortable with it come OTAs or come whatever may happen. So, yeah, it's going to be trying to win these last four games, trying to leave out on a good note. But like I said, the season's not over with. It's still got what, four more games, so it's, it's going to be a while before we can say that. How much does it matter that Johnson can spread out wide and run patterns as, as opposed to just a, you know just dump offs and screen passes that he can actually run patterns down the field? It should be a highlight for an offense coordinator to have a back like that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that you can split him out, you can leave him in the backfield, you can will him out, whatever you want to do with him, he can do it. You know what I'm saying? Like, he's one of the most complete backs, and he's going to be one person we're going to have to worry about, and Larry Fitzgerald also. Yeah. Zeke, Ty Gurley, him, I mean, you guys, you guys have seen We'd have played, we'd have seen them all. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> Saquon back in the preseason, I mean, you really have seen just We'd have seen, we just seen every, every good back, so that's going to be the next one in line that we got to see again and we got to play. I think we've seen all the first-round quarterbacks, too, except Lamar Jackson, I think. The oh, you got to have me go back in my head. Man. I think yeah, you're right. Besides Lamar Jackson, and yeah, I think he been he been doing it. Been he been doing well over there in uh, in Baltimore. Well, teams uh, have a first year coach and are struggling. Do you think that's inevitable in some ways that when you have a first year coach, there's a transition that leads to losing? Mm, it it just depends how everybody grasps onto the philosophy. It depends how everybody grasps onto what they're trying to, I mean, what type of message they're trying to send across. Yeah, you're going you're gonna to have some struggles here and there. Your first year, you will. You can see L.A. Rams, Sean McVay, when he went to L.A., he had a struggle. Now, what they say, he got a, a, the best show on turf 2.0. So, yeah, your first year, you're going to have struggles. If you don't, you, you lucked up. You ran into the right team. You got the right older guys, right vets, and right younger guys that's willing to follow to have a good team. But usually, yeah, that first year, you're going to have a struggle. But once that second year comes around, now we're going to see what type of team you really got. Because now you had time during the offseason putting the team together, the draft, free agency, whatever it may be, put everything in the right place so when you go out the next season, you can play right. As you look back, do you think um, people in this locker room were slow to adapt, embrace you know, Patricia's philosophy, way of doing business, whatever it is? No, everybody was just trying to understand it. Everybody was just everybody was so used to the last coach that was here. I forgot who it was, but they were trying to get. They was used to the last coach, and then to have somebody like Matt Patricia come in here with his philosophy, and his geeky ways of teaching us about football, teaching about organization, teaching about so much. I think it took people a little bit of time to grasp on. People were willing to accept it, but they just didn't. They just didn't understand it at first. Like, why we have to know this? Why we have to know that? Why we have to know this? Now we in this part of the season. Now people's like, oh, I now I understand why. Now now they understand football, not playing it, but you understand it now before you go onto the field. And I believe that everybody in the locker room understood what he was trying to get at now because if you go any other place in the NFL besides New England, but any other place, you you I think you won't hear football the way Matt Patricia teaches. Like what? Like what's a bit of information that he gives you guys during the course of the week that just would just saying like that? some like tendencies, um, your habits or. Who's the owner, or where the owner started from? GM, just—it's just so many different things that he he gives you about football that helps you out. You it like makes that? the game a lot easier, huh? Do you like that? I do, because it, it makes you respect the game a lot better. Once you, you once you understand the game that you're playing, now you respect the game that you're playing. Now the game's gonna respect you and give you what you're asking for. But you got to be willing to take that information in. So how can knowing, you know, if, if this week if he says, hey, you know, this, the Bill Bidwells have owned this franchise or, you know, the, the offensive partner of Life which he took over midseason, how, how does that help you guys on Sunday? Because it, cause it's good to tell us what the what they're thinking of. We get to tell them, like you said, the offense coordinator, 
who, well, I don't know too many kids that have been in the league when he was there, but if you, if you, if you seen him, like you understand his philosophy of being a quarterback, now he's been an offense coordinator, now you see what type of offense he's, he's finna run. So now I get to help you to understand, like, all right, this is the type of offense they're gonna run, this is what he likes to do. So now he's playing with a rookie quarterback, so this is how it's gonna go. Yeah, I was going to say that. <laughs> what have you seen in Ashawn Robinson coming on this year and Deshaun Hand a little different, developing right away, right from the jump? They really, they really launched their careers in a different way. I think, I think both, of them, both of them are great. Both of them was willing to listen. Both of them was willing to work. Both of them willing to put the extra time in. As you see on the field, Deshaun Hand and Ashawn is, is doing a great job for us, especially on the run and on the pass, getting pressure for us and helping us out and making it, making the, the day, making the game a lot easier for JD. JD don't got to move when you have two, you got two monsters like that in the middle. And on third down, you got somebody like Deshaun Hand who, who can pass, rush, or play the run. There's so many different things they can do with Ashawn Robinson and Hand, but you can see the improvement from week one to now, what type of defense lineman they were. They was like that already. They just had to understand our defense. And once they did, now you're getting the key components. Now is it is, it is our D-line. At one point, people were worried about it. Now, I think people really don't even talk about our D-line anymore. You got it. You weren't here for Ashawn. He really is a different player now than he was. Like he should be in his third year. They seem like he's really accelerated his development this year over the first two. As, a, you know, as, a, as opposed to Deshaun, who really, I think, started faster. He, but, but he learned. Faster, you know. Yeah, hand started faster. but. I mean, but Ashawn came along. When Ashawn finally came along and understood and asked the coaches questions and asking players like some of us who have been in the defense right. what he had to do, you seen how quick he accelerated. To me, I think, and I'm not too not too in his horn and trying to make it feel good, but he will be probably the top, I'm going to go back to top three again. He'll probably be one of the top three run defenders or pass or D lineman in the league. He's that, he's, he's that special that yeah, he can do it. It just, now he just, Finish this season out great. Fourth year, now you have to make that big leap. Now you got to make that improvement and be like the D lineman that everybody knows he's capable of being. Are there players, young players, who aren't sure if they should ask for help, or some maybe just don't want to admit they need help? If you don't need help, you see how long you've been around the league. But guys like them, like Ashawn and guys like Han, they actually open their mouth and ask us, like, hey, what do you see? Or how can I get better? Or how can I do this? So that would help them get their game a little bit faster. That would help Ashawn come along a lot quicker, came along a lot quicker and became this dominant player he is. He always, he always been the best he tackle on our team, hands down. Then again, Snack, Snacks already established that. But with Ashawn and Snacks inside the middle, man, that's just, that's just, that is a great combination for a D coordinator. I know that makes – Matt Patricia lips, lips his chops when you know he got two guys like that that they can take up probably four or five blockers just, just, just to run the ball. I'm just saying, you know, snack count for a few more people. <laughs> but but it, it, it probably it usually take that many to block those type of dudes because they're, they're probably some of the, they're probably the best D linemen in the league, Them, those two. You said top three. You think Ashawn can be top three run the Hands down. Hands down. It, it, you, see, you see how he is in the game. He throws guys to the side. He can get penetration. That guy always moves forward, nobody can stop him. I, mean, I don't care what lineman, you can just flip on any film on him. No lineman has able, been able to stop Ashawn Robertson. As long as he's going forward, you can't stop him. And he's athletic. You can't find a guy that size or his ability that can move is that athletic. And just to be able to put him down on the inside and be able to do what he do, and plus have a guy like Snack, an all-pro defense tackle next to him, can ask for a better combination. Are you saying Snacks provides depth on his own? Huh? Snacks, yeah. Just, on yes. <laughs> With and length, if you want to go that, way, go that way, he provides both. But to have a guy like that on our team, it really helps. Plus, he added in with, with a lot of things that Ashawn does and make Ashawn play a lot of lot quicker. Like I said, the combination in the middle between him, I mean, Snacks and Ashawn is incredible. And they have, like I said, hands coming along and doing what he's doing. It's a plus. So, not trying to get along to next year, but it looked it's a bright future. But for right now, these next four games are going to look a lot of bright because you got guys like this, and plus we're playing on off the line that really never played together at no given point. But you got guys that have played with each other just by the majority of the season that know each other very well. What do you guys call yeah, Deshaun awesome. and, and Deshaun? The Alabama boys, Deshaun? I mean, no, nah, we ain't getting that name in here. Nah, they ain't getting Alabama boys. We ain't getting that name in here. I'm sorry. Right. It's because I mean, it's here, and I got another LSU guy here. Nah, we can't give him that name. <laughs> Not yet. Anything with Deshaun's? I mean, is there any, you got any nickname for those two? Oh, Rook? I, yeah, I still got that for hand. Hands to the, hands to the Rook.
That's that's his name. I don't care how many games he passed, whatever. As long as I'm still in the league, he's still gonna be the rookie to me. That's just that's just it. In a way, is it kind of like a rookie for Ashawn too, just learning the new system? It was at at beginning, but like I said, now he he got it. Now he already know what he's doing. Now he's just trying to adjust his game on things that he can do. Probably backdoor plays. Probably disrupt a lot of more plays. He's learning. He he done, he understand what he needs to do now. And and like I said, and it's showing on film each and every other week. This guy runs to the ball. Don't care if it's 10, 15, 20 yard downfield. He's going down and he's making pressure on the quarterback. He's making running back life a living hell when they have to make that first cut too early and they know they want to stretch it or do anything. Like I said, Ashawn Robertson is going to be top three, hands down, one of the best D-linemen in our league if he can continue what he's doing.